morning, or it might be good afternoon to one and all, whenever you're viewing this at your own uh, possibilities, your own leisure. We are gathered here this morning on this special day, which we're going to recognise, celebrate and support our primary sevens, who are no longer actually now primary sevens, now moving to S1 and furthering their educational progress. We begin our celebration together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. So although you can see me here on camera, I am joined by socially distanced uh, teachers who are here present, and I'd just like them to say their name uh, out loud, and so although you can't see them, uh, you know who's here praying, supporting, and accompanying you. Mr. McGovern. Miss Quinn. Miss Duffy. Miss McGee. Mrs. Woods. Mrs. Adams. Mrs. Kelly. Mr. O'Hagan. Mr. Nicholas. Welcome to a socially distanced celebration. And of course, a very, very special welcome to all of you. Prime, uh, I won't call you primary seven now. S1, new S1 intake. It's been the strangest of times without a doubt. It's been the most awkward of times without a doubt. And everyone, with no exception, has had to make an incredible effort to adjust. Teachers have had to do it. You have had to do it. Parents have had to do it. Workers generally have had to do it. But what we have to remember is through all these adaptations and changes, we are called to be stronger than we were. COVID-19 did limit and has limited and has restricted and has indeed changed many things for us. But what has remained constant is the faith that we profess. What has remained constant is the love and the presence of God and that's what we celebrate in you today. You are a sign of that presence of God and you are a symbol of the strength that we are moving forward. Each one of us have coped in different ways. Some of us have struggled more than others. That's okay, that's fine. But we're in this together. Pope Francis said quite a while back, we are in this together and together we'll come through it. So for the times when we've doubted, for the times maybe... A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing the praises of the Lord's goodness and, and all his marvellous deeds in return for all that he's done for us and for the great kindness he has shown us in his mercy and his boundless goodness. He said, truly, they are my people, sons and no rogues. He proved himself a saviour in all their troubles. It was neither messenger nor angel, but his presence that saved them. In his love and pity, he redeemed them himself. He lifted them up, carried them throughout the days of old. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. I never stop thanking God for all the graces you have received. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ send you grace and peace. I never stop thanking God for all the graces you have received through Jesus Christ. I thank him that you have been enriched in so many ways, especially in your teachers and preachers. The witness to Christ has indeed been strong among you, so that you will not be without any of the gifts of the Spirit while you are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. And he will keep you steady and without blame until the last day. The day of our Lord Jesus Christ, because God, by calling you, has joined you to his Son, Jesus Christ, and God is faithful. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you but they would be too much for you now. But when the Spirit of truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth, since he will not be speaking as from himself, but will say only what he has learnt, and he will tell you of the things to come. The Gospel of the Lord. Circumstances and the most awkward of situations. We're called to celebrate you guys 
who have journeyed here for different periods of time in John Paul II Primary and now about to enter the world of secondary education. It's exciting, it's new and it's also challenging and it's understandable there'll be a wee bit of apprehension, maybe even a wee bit of fear. We haven't been able to do the same preparation this year as other years. That's unfortunate. But you have been prepared and you are prepared. I would invite you to trust in what you've been given in your years and your formation and your support here in John Paul II and put that to good use in whether it was at Margaret Mary Secondary or whatever secondary you're going to be in. Trust. So here's a wee story. A young woman went to her mother and told her about her life and how things had been so hard for her. This might be yourself in the last three months. She didn't know how she was going to make it. Again, that may be you. And there might even be the temptation, oh, is it worth it? Why don't I just give up? This is too hard. It's too difficult. She was tired of fighting and struggling. It seemed that as one problem was solved, another one appeared. And if you don't think that actually happens in real life, ask your parents. But you've experienced it in the last three months. So what did her mother do? Her mother took her to the kitchen. And she filled three pots with water. In the first pot, she placed some carrots. In the second pot, she placed some eggs. And in the third pot, she placed some coffee beans. And she put all three pots to boil. She let them boil. She didn't say anything to the daughter. And about 20, 25 minutes, she turned off the heat, the gas. And she removed each of the things from the water. She removed the carrots, she removed the eggs, and she removed, she tried to remove the coffee beans. She placed them all in a bowl. Then she said to the daughter, what do you see? And the daughter said, well, carrots, eggs, and coffee beans. She said, right, okay. She brought her closer and she said, I want you to feel the carrots. So the daughter went to touch the carrots. And of course, they're all soft and squishy. Now, if you know carrots, they're not soft and squishy. When they go into the water, they're very hard. It's only people with good teeth that can actually eat them raw as well. That's why we shred them or we cut them up into wee pieces. Then she took, she went to the bowl with the eggs and she touched and they were hard boiled. You could drop it, it would smash, but that's not how the eggs went into the water. The eggs went in soft, very delicate, very fragile, and the boiling water hardened them. And then she came to the bowl with the brown coloured water in it. And the aroma was beautiful. And if you're a coffee lover, the taste would have been beautiful as well. And then her mother explained, this is what happens in life. There's some situations that you will go into and you'll be like the carrots, very strong, very tough, very hard, but the situation will soften you. And there's other situations where you'll be so fragile and so delicate, but the situation will be like a hard-boiled egg and you'll, you'll harden up. So as you're going to secondary school, what do you want to be? Do you want to be a carrot? Do you want to be an egg? Or do you want to be a coffee bean? Because what happens to the coffee beans? They disappear in the boiling water, but they leave their mark. That boiling water becomes more attractive for having had the coffee bean in it. That boiling water becomes what people are looking for first thing in the morning. A pick-me-up, a wee bit of energy, a wee bit of caffeine. Are you a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean in secondary? I'm going to invite you to be a coffee bean. I'm going to invite you to infuse the waters of secondary with your taste and your aroma so that you will add a richness to the secondary experience. Because without you, that water just remains water. You might go in thinking, I'm a carrot, rough and tough, 
I can handle anything. And that might be the case, it might not be the case. Or you might think, oh dear God, I want to go to sex, I can't handle this, this is going to be too much for me. And it will just harden you up and then it's very difficult to interact with you. Be a cock again. Take this experience of John Paul II and go to secondary and infuse secondary with your aroma, with your taste. And the secondary will be better off for it, but so will you. Because you will take your surroundings and you will change those surroundings. You'll be changed by them, but you will change them as well. So that's what we wish for you in your new secondary experience. Be a coffee bean. You can be a decaf coffee bean if you want, or you can be a caffeinated coffee bean, whatever you want. But infuse your aroma, your taste, and your experience in secondary, and everybody will be better off for it. We pray for the church. Everywhere we go, we represent the teachings of the church. Let us use the strength and knowledge we have gained to spread the word and love of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear us. We belong to many families. The family we have at home, the family we belong to at school, and of course the family of God. May we realise that we are never alone in life as long as we have family. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear us. We're about to leave the safe, loving environment of St John Paul II. We have been nurtured and educated in happy surroundings, and this will continue in St Margaret Mary Secondary. May we benefit from love and care and use it to help and influence others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The world is a daunting place. Give us strength of character to meet all obstacles with courage and determination. We are fortunate here in Castle Oak. We have a great caring community which surrounds us and protects us. Let us build upon these in the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <coughs> Loving God, we had a prayer for all of the families of our leavers of our graduating class of 2020, that they may be safe, they may be well, and in spite of the restrictions and limitations, they may continue to grow together, to be together, to be one and to be united for all the families of our graduates of 2020. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear yeah. our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the blessings that you've given us every day. We thank you for the gift of education, for the commitment of staff and parents, school personnel, everyone who's involved in the educational process, and most of all we give you thanks for our wonderful, creative, imaginative, enthusiastic pupils. Continue to enlighten them, strengthen them, and give them the perseverance that they need to be excellent coffee beans in secondary. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Are we off at this song? Sister, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good all the soul of church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in the sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we make it ours by a worthy way of life. We make our prayer through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, 
through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, to whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Redeemer and Saviour, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and saints we declare your glory, as with one voice together we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your missionary church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, and all the clergy. We remember in this moment all past pupils and staff and workers of this primary school who have gone on to their eternal reward, especially if there's any close family members of our graduating class. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. John Paul II, St. Margaret Mary, St. Bartholomew, St. Guido Maria Conforti, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. times we have so many words, so many sounds, so much music round about us. Jesus invited us to say a very simple prayer. It's a prayer that we can say at any time of the day or night. It's a prayer that reconnects us with God and offers God our availability. Thy will be done. So we pray together that in this progress, in this transition period, from primary school to secondary school, that you're able to see and accept, you don't have to understand, but to see and accept God's will, that God is seeing the bigger picture. So we trust in the words of Jesus as we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
and we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord and the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Although we're distanced from one another and we're only connected electronically, we wish each other a sign of Christ's peace. Oh a live streamed or a recorded service is perhaps a little bit difficult to understand. It's kind of like going into Asda, looking at the shelves but not being able to get anything off them and then walking out again. But it, it isn't in another way. There's a very famous stadium that many people in the East End of Glasgow are familiar with and it's in Lisbon. And in that stadium, a very special thing happens way before all of you were born, just after I was born, way before you were born. And when it came, the anniversary of that particular victory, many people went to the stadium. Now, there was no game on, there was no team, probably no nets up at the goal. I don't even know if it'd be lying. But they wanted to be just in that atmosphere, just in that context, because there was something powerful for them in that stadium in Lisbon. Something even more powerful is here in our faith. So even though you can't physically be here, even though now I'm the only one that can physically receive communion just now, that does not diminish the power that this moment can have in your life. If people were willing to travel thousands of miles to go to an empty field and get some enthusiasm and inspiration from it, how much more then are we able to get to be in the context of the centrality of our faith in order to go on? So even though you haven't physically been here and you haven't physically received communion as you would normally do, there is still power here. So, our prayers, our congratulations and our support go to Aisha, to Paige, to Jacob, to Christian, to Cruz, to Kira, to Aidan, to Leone, to Keris, to Mark, to Jay, to Kellis, Abby, James, Jackson, Abbas, Antonina, Daniel, Woodsa, Pierce, Callum, Mia, Riley, Logan, Neve, Kendall, Angel, Alicia, Theo, Edward and Callum. Let's go. Right I'd like to thank Father Ian for taking the time uh, to celebrate Mass with us this morning. Uh, I'm hoping that it marks this occasion, of, particularly for our primary servants who are leaving us. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the staff, all the teaching staff, support for learning workers who have been working very hard over the last few weeks and months trying to keep some form of normality for you guys at home. I'd like to thank uh, your parents for all their hard work um, and all their teaching that they're having to do at home. Uh, I'm also very aware that it takes an awful lot of patience um, to teach your children uh, throughout the, the kind of normal school day, an unusual school day. 
I'd like to thank um, the boys and girls of all the school for the hard work over the last few months. Um, and more importantly for our primary sevens, I'd like to take this opportunity to say well done for everything that you've um, worked in this year, for all your achievements, um, for everything actually, for some of you, it might even be seven years worth of um, wonderful experiences that hopefully you'll take away with you. Um, for the primary sevens, I'd also like to say that this has actually been probably the easiest primary seven that we've ever had had to manage. I've been here for almost 20 years up in Castlemilk, and I must admit, you guys made my life very, very easy this year, which was great. I don't know if Mrs. Woods will agree with me, but she's nodding ahead, she does agree, that's great. So well done to everyone for all your excellent behavior, your hard work, your efforts. I'm hoping, as I said, that you'll have lots of fond memories to take with you into secondary school. So I was just, I was just quickly noting there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The Ten Commandments of your secondary. I like number three, take time to play. I think that's a good one. Take time to dream. But every single one of them come together to form the whole picture. Our final <coughs> prayer today is about being educated, not for an exam, not just for a year, but for life to take into your relationships, your experiences, the theory that you've been given in school, but turn that theory into practice. So I'll use the prayer at the end here, which asks us for that education for life. It asks for a blessing for the parents, all those who, the parents are the first teachers anyway, who've just been given a school experience this year, which they didn't think they were gonna have. So the parents are always the first teachers, in the faith as well as education, and that is supported by the teaching staff. So I'd like to add the uh, thanks of the head teacher to all teaching staff, not only here in John Paul II, but all over Scotland who have had to change, adapt, and become technologically experts and masters of the keyboard, Microsoft Teams, and any other pro program uh, that was being used. Let us pray. Father, educate us for life. Help us to follow the path you have set out before us. Guide us to live with faith in you, with hope in your plans for our lives, and with love for all people. Bless our parents for showing us how to live. Bless our teachers for using their talent so that we can develop our own. Bless all people who show respect for all life which you create for us. Father, we make this prayer to you in the name of Jesus, your Son, and through your Holy Spirit. Amen. Things can change if you see very quickly. If all goes well, I'm going to be in St. Margaret Mary's Secondary School at the beginning of the school year. I'm the school chaplain. I'll also be helping out with classes. And so I look forward to seeing you, to getting to know your name, and to walking alongside with you. So you'll at least have one familiar face if you've got nothing else down there. At least you can come to me and say, I don't like this, and we'll see what we can do about it. We're going to end with a blessing and then a final song. It's a final song. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless each and every one of us, especially our graduating class of 2020, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist has ended. Let us go forth to love and to serve the Lord through loving and serving one another. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Have a wonderful summer. God bless. Thanks, Father.